Hello, welcome back. My name is Yap, uh, Yap Chi Yuan. I'm from uh, InfoSight. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, STP or Spanning Tree Protocol. Right, so let's start the session now. So here on this topic, we are going to look into how we can configure a redundant link, yet we want to eliminate loops. So here we are going to look into STP. So the topic I'm going to look into will be the uh, traditional STP. RSTP and the MSTP. So hopefully after you complete this uh, video, uh, we are going to understand the STP principle, the configuration on the STP, how do we troubleshoot STP and some of the uh, exam uh, tips. Okay, so let's start with the STP principle first. Okay, so here on the STP principle, we are going to cover um, a few things. First, we need to look into why we need to have STP and the background of STP. How really STP work on the basic concept. Now, very importantly is that uh, we need to look into how to calculate the STP calculation. Then we are going to examine what type of port status that we have. Then if let's say we do have topology change, how this topology change take place. And finally, we also will look into the STP limitation. Let's look into the need for STP and what is the STP trying to solve. Here, you can see that I have a PC1 connected to switch number one and switch number two. Now, if switch number one having a broadcast, so broadcast is quite common in a network. So when PC1 broadcasts, it will send to the port one of switch one at the same time port one of switch two. So since this is a broadcast, it's going to send to the other port of the switch 2 and the broadcast from port 1 will send to the other side of a port 2 of the switch 1. Hence, you can see that the broadcast is repeating itself endlessly inside the loop. So hence, we call this as a broadcast loop. The reason that this loop happens is because that both the uh, uplink are forwarding. So the loop is actually loop endlessly. Now the other reason is because that if it's not a broadcast even though it's a unicast we still have a problem because that both the link is in forwarding the MAC address will be flapping between the port number one here or it can be in the port number two of the switch two is because that both of them are in forwarding and they are learning at a different time so it will make them flap between these two now either of this problem uh, is not good into the network so your network will fail so for us to stop this looping as well as the MAC address flapping STP is being introduced to prevent the loop STP conformed to the standard of IEEE and the standard is 802.1D. Now this is an old standard, okay? So this is traditional standard tree, uh, spanning tree. Now the principle of a spanning tree is to build a loop-free network. Now how can it be loop-free? Now one of the ways for you to break the loop is to block the port. So here we have a blocking port. So the implementation is to do a blocking. So that is a basic of STP. Now next we are going to look into how the blocking or how the mechanism to choose which is a blocking and which is the forwarding. Hence we are going to look into some terms. First we have the root bridge. Now root bridge in fact is what we call the reference point. Now this is the root point into our entire spanning tree. So the root bridge with the smallest BID or bridge ID will become the root bridge. Whereas the bridge ID is a combination of your priority and the MAC address of the switch. So whichever that is lower on the three switches will become the root bridge. Next we are going to look into the root port. Now as you can see from here the root bridge the port is called designated port. Designated port. But the adjacency port we call it as a root port root port. So port with the smallest root path to the root bridge is called the root port. So which means that if this is a root bridge, the cost over here is zero. All right. So if let's say this is a um, Ethernet port 
So the port with the lowest cost, it will be the root port. Okay, so this is the root port. Whereas the designated port, as you can see that we have a designated port on the root bridge, as well as a non-root bridge. Now, designated port definition is the bridge closest to the root bridge with the lowest cost on each network segment is used as a designated bridge. The port on the designated bridge on the network segment is called designated port. So here, what you can see here is I have a root bridge. So as I said that this is my reference point. So if let's say now this is the designated port, this is a root port. Designated port will send what we call the BPDU. So BPDU is being um, origin by a root bridge. Now since I have a another link between S2 and S3, so here this is my designated port. So designated port will be forwarding. So again, I will also will be sending BPDU. Now. Between S2 and S3, if the link between S2 and S3 is forwarding, then I will have a loop. So here, I have a designated port and the alternate port. So designated port is the one who actually send a BPDU. But on the other link, point to point link, you notice that this is being blocked. So traffic will not able to pass through. So hence, we have a alternate port. Alternate port is the port that is being blocked. So over here, uh, I just want to introduce the terms of root bridge, root port, designated port, and alternate port. So I'm going to uh, explain the mechanism on how to choose the root bridge, root port, designated port, and alternate port with different type of uh, status. Just now I mentioned about the BPDU. Now the BPDU is being sent by the root bridge. All right, so we also call it as the configuration BPDU. So configuration BPDU carry certain parameters, and those parameters include the root ID, the root path cost, the bridge ID, and the port ID. So here we have the root ID, the root path cost, the bridge ID, and the port ID. Now beside that, you notice that the uh, BPDU are being sent in a multicast. And we have a reserved multicast address here, 0180C2. Uh, this is a special multicast address used by the BPDU. All right, that is the multicast address. Now, the BPDU also being H depend on the max, maximum H value. Here, you can see that we have our max H. So this is about 20 seconds. And by default, uh, the uh, STP BPDU is 2 seconds, so it will send every 2 seconds. And we also have a default timer of a forward delay of 15 seconds. So these are the uh, configuration BPDU that is being sent by the root bridge. Let's look into the STP root bridge selection. Uh, if you still remember, I mentioned that the root bridge is the reference point for the spanning tree protocol. So when the switch first started, all right, it will do the initialization of the STP. Now, when STP initialize, they are going to send a BPDU, and they have this configuration inside there. The first configuration here, this will be our root bridge. So, this is our root bridge ID. This will be the root cost. Here is our bridge ID. And the last one here is our port ID. So here we have a port A. So you can see that the priority of S1 is a zero and the bridge ID is a zero. So the root path cost is also a zero because everyone would think that they are the root. Now the configure priority for S2 is one. So the bridge ID is one and the root cost is zero. And this is advertised using a port B. Now let's look into how this um, switch will select which one is the root bridge. They are selecting based on a set of criteria. Now the first thing they'll look into is the BPDU. Because the BPDU have the four parameters that I mentioned, so they are going to look for the lowest priority. So if let's say early on I have a um, 
switch number one have a priority of zero and switch number two have a priority of one. So switch number zero will have a lower number of priority, which means that it has the highest priority. Remember, lower the number means higher the priority. So the first thing is we'll choose the lower priority. If the BBDU has a higher priority, the port replaced is BPDU with the BPDU receive, which means that just now, if let's say now, switch one send a priority of a zero and switch two have a priority of one. So this BPDU will be uh, overwrite the S2 BPDU. So that's the first thing. Now, second step here, the device will compare BPDU on all the port. The configure BPDU with the smallest BID has the highest priority. Okay, so which means that if let's say I have here, let me go back on this topology. If let's say I have the same priority, then I'm going to choose which one have the lower bridge ID. Right. So the lowest one will have the highest priority, the lowest or smallest bridge ID. If the bridge ID is the same, so in this case we have a tie, then we are going to compare the root path cost. So the root path cost on both sides is zero and zero. So if let's say this is a zero and this is 10, so this will become the winner. All right, next. So the smaller value of the S, S indicating the cost, then the priority will be uh, better. Now if let's say that the cost is also the tie, then the next thing we are going to look for is that the system compare the designated bridge ID, designated port ID, and the ID of the port received on the configuration BPDU. So which means that if we look into this uh, switch one, they will have the port priority. All right, so each of these, if let's say both of them having the same bridge priority and everything is the same, so assuming that now I have two parallel connection over here. So if let's say everything the same, then they are going to look into the port priority. Okay, so here the lowest one will be the winner. All right, the smaller value indicate higher priority. And all the compare above are the small one win, meaning that if let's say I have the BPDU with the bridge ID, the lowest bridge ID win, if you have a lowest path cost, the root path cost, the lower path cost win. And if you have a port ID, then the lower port ID will win. All right. So this is the selection on the uh, configuration BPDU. Now it will be best for us to demonstrate uh, this uh, configuration BPDU and the selection of the root bridge using a topology. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.